Headline news most affecting Chilliwack this week. Traffic relief on Vetter near Garrison and Promontory. A local MLA starting a community scholarship, this to aid LGBTQ students to get a post-secondary education. Proms are back, so are the dresses for the students who can't afford one. The second annual Chilliwack Student Film Festival is in the books. And Chilliwack teaming up with Rotary for a second pump track. Josh will have more in sports. Our special guest this week includes Paula DeWitt and another interview of GW Graham Film students in Seen Here First. And Lance Heron, the CEO of the sport tech company Armilla, in an interview again with our own Josh Bohr in sports. Okay, Chilliwack, let's get started. Our top news story sponsored by Zacharias Vickers LLP. And it is finally happening. And it can't finish soon enough for the drivers. The widening and the paving of Vetter Road is part of a larger construction package that will include the widening of Promontory from Vetter Elementary East to Chester Drive and the upgrade of Prest Road from Highway 1 to McGuire Road. City of Chilliwack webpage has all the information and this is going to slow down a ton of traffic for drivers until at least the 21st. Last week, Chilliwack Kent MLA Kelly Patton announcing in the legislature that in partnership with Chilliwack Pride Society, she will co-fund three new scholarships available to 2S LGBTQ plus community members who live in the riding of Chilliwack Kent. Now, the money is to go to funding a post-secondary education. This coming on the heels of the city granting $4,500 for the upcoming Chilliwack Pride event. That's coming up in August. When Molson Breweries came to Chilliwack in September of 2019, they did promise to blend in with the surroundings. That not only, it only included their landscaping, it included a promise for indigenous artwork for their silos. That project will be unveiled this week. Molson's holding a media event to show off the artwork. You'll see that coming up uh, in social media in the next few days on both Chill TV and FEN Fraser Valley News. After two very frustrating years of the pandemic shutting down that high school ritual, the grad dance, comes word that Chilliwack Secondary School has renewed a program for graduating high school students to borrow a prom dress for the big occasion. Not all students and parents can afford the gown, so contact Chilliwack Secondary for more information. The restoration of Maple Bay Beach and the picnic area at Cultus Lake Provincial Park continues. You've seen the pictures of the devastation after last November's storm when the picnic tables were buried under tons of rock. While the area is still closed off to visitors for the time being, there's been major progress uh, as the cleanup uh, includes the planting of grass, but still no timeline for that part of the park to reopen. The cabins, though, they are open. The world's only water dance show is coming to the Chilliwack Cultural Center. It's billed as a fantastic new special dance performance with a star cast from Ukraine in support of their country. It's also a fundraiser for the Canada-Ukraine Foundation to support Ukrainian refugees in Canada. If you were confronted with somebody having an overdose, would you know what to do? The Chilliwack Alano Club hosting a Narcan training session this coming Monday. It's a workshop on how to administer naloxone. It is free. Check the Chilliwack Alano Club Facebook page for more information. The last Friday night, a spectacular night for student film in Chilliwack. As GW Graham film and television teacher Michael Florzone uh, led the second annual Chilliwack Student Film Festival, showcasing a very creative and talented group of young people and their celluloid se uh, creations uh, to an appreciative audience of the GW Graham Theatre. Student film shorts were uh, especially the highlight. Uh, 25 selected for the festival, the best of the best, and we were very fortunate to have the big winner of that evening, Daniel Crabb, in an interview with Paula DeWitt in Seen Here First, that's coming up later in the program. By the way, Daniel won Best Director, Best Teamwork, his collaboration, and the evening's top prize with the Vancouver Film School Connect Award. That entitles Daniel to pick from any of the VFS Connect programs. Fraser Valley Classic Car Show is back on Saturday, and as was the case in 2019, the show will be located at the UFE parking lot number 7 and surrounding the grass areas on the Chilliwack UFE campus at Canada Education Park. If you're wondering where that is, that's the part between UFE and the Justice Institute of B.C., 
not far away from the RCMP gun range. Now, the purpose of the show is to fundraise for the Chilliwack General Hospital via the Fraser Health Care Foundation. Entrance to the show is by no donation. And coming up, Paula DeWitt with the interview with Daniel Crabb, the multi-award winner at the Chilliwack Film Festival from Friday night. And then Josh with sports and his interview with Lance Heron, the CEO of Armilla, talking about some rather fantastic new sports technology. This is Paula DeWitt and welcome to another edition of Seen Here First. I have a very exciting and interesting person in the studio with me today. His name is Danny and he's from G.W. Graham and he has a film in the, the Chilliwack Student Film Festival. So why don't you tell us all about this film and who you made it with and is it a part of your school program? Yeah, so um, I'm a part of a, I was in a film class um, in the first semester of school and for our final project we were given complete creative control of what to make. Um, and my group of friends I have, I've had the same film group since uh, grade ten, and they're all oh, wow. yeah, they're all so supportive of like each other's ideas, and we all are always brainstorming. So um, basically, I we based it just off a dream I had, and um, a lot of it um, was filmed like between like t midnight to like five in the morning. Oh, wow, a lot neat. of uh, late night, you know, messing around with lights, experimenting with things, really just putting our minds onto film and not really doubting ourselves and just doing what we thought, you know. What was the dream? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so basically, um, it's a dream about me um, and my interpretation of an afterlife and uh, okay. of uh, how I would uh, react to seeing me and my friends basically in purgatory. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. That's very interesting. <laughs> yeah, definitely not the most uh, happy uh, student project, but um, I'm glad I made it though because you know it's it really stretched our muscles on you know what we can and can't do and so it really um, made you think yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not the most uh, a lot a lot not a lot of people get the story the first time but once I explain it to them they're like oh wow that's that's pretty cool yeah um, so who are the other people that have, that worked with you on this yeah so my friends um, Gabe Nate Joe Jake and Grayson <laughs> um, there's a few of them. They're all. Um, they're all grade twelve. They're all grade twelve. They've so you're all. You're all been, graduating this year. Yeah, we're we're a, we're a circle that um, have been together. We've all been friends since grade eight. Oh, that's and, nice. Um, yeah, I took film in grade ten with Gabe, and then we told the other friends about, it, and they were like, "Oh, I want to try that." So in grade eleven, and then it just kept building from there. It's a bit bittersweet. Um, yeah, it's it's like your final. It's nice run together. Yeah, it's nice that um, they stuck around for the whole thing because so, it means a lot to me. Tell us a little bit about what kind of cameras you used, uh, sound equipment, that kind of thing. Yeah, so I have a, it's a Nikon D7000, it's called, um, that I got for Christmas, um, mixed with that with a Canon SL2 that um, my film teacher, Michael Florzone, um, let us borrow. He was really nice to let us borrow equipment that we needed throughout the weekend, because a lot of um, what we did was done outside of school, at like two in the morning in different areas and um so if you're doing it at night do you need special lighting yeah so we have like portable lights that i, I got um got this thing called a sunlight lamp um, that my sister got me um and it basically makes like a circular light in that made some really cool shots um the whole project is project is meant to feel isolated and you're not really entirely sure where the characters are at time um very neat. Yeah, it's very. Was very the cameras four K cameras? Were they old school? We filmed um, the whole thing in ten eighty p on digital. Um, nothing was made with uh, anything um, like we didn't do any analog VHS or anything for this project, um, but um, it it kept the consistency. Um, other times we've mixed uh, between analog and digital, which works really nicely, um, but we we decided not to do that for this project. Okay, so when you envision this project in your mind, okay, it's about the dream. Do you write everything down exactly how it's going to go? You have a script, you have a lighting script, you have a camera script, or do you just go, okay, let's do it and see what happens? <laughs> um, I, I, I wrote down like a journal basically about my dream once I thought about it. I spent a lot of time writing it down, things I remember, things that would have been cool to add. And I basically, instead of writing a script, I wrote more of a, um, more of like a story of like, here's this person, He's now here. He wants to know where his friends are. He's scared, um, and I. Uh, a lot of uh, what the uh, story ended up happening was just you know we hopped in the car three in the morning, 
tried some shots. That looked really cool. All right, let's use that. And then once we had all of our clips collected, we sat down and said, what can we, what can we do with this? What, you know, how can we piece this together and sculpture this into a, into something beautiful. So and then, <clears throat> what equipment are you using to edit it? We use Adobe Premiere Pro okay. um, at our school. It's preloaded on all the school computers we have. Um, and it, it's my favorite like um, editing software. I'm very comfortable with it. Uh, so you see yourself doing this in the future? I would very much like to, yeah. <laughs> well, good luck. It's mm -hmm. going to be nice to see the movie now. And we'll see you next time yeah. on Scene Here First. Welcome back to sports, everyone. Josh here with you once again. And before we get into sports, I got another interview for you. We had interviews last week. We got another one this week. And it's another one from the BCCFA Prospects game, The Game. I met some really cool people there. Chase Claypool probably being the coolest. But I'm another really interesting individual by the name of Lance Heron. He's the CEO of a company called Armilitech that is looking to revolutionize the way in which players communicate with their coaches on the sideline, both in football, baseball, basketball. The applications are nearly endless. And uh, to hear a little more about it, here's our conversation from a couple weeks ago. Josh Bohr here for Chill TV. We are at uh, the BCCFA exhibition prospects game, the game as they're calling it. And I ran here into Lance Heron from Armella Tech. You have got a very cool technology on your hands, my friend. Uh, can you explain to me what this whole contraption is? Sure. So this is a, a play calling system loads all your plays into there so you've actually got access to a play calling sheet or mm -hmm. every single play in your library you push a button you push on the what snap count and it shows up on the wristband with a vibration in milliseconds so the coach has his entire playbook on this screen no more you know sheet cards or anything like that no. punches it in what plays can you call more than one play at a time you could call three four plays at a time if you wanted to and then it shows up on the qb it or whoever else has it on on the wristband for them to use that's unbelievable. I can imagine that was going to be hugely popular. Have you got it? You know, had a conversation with CFL, NFL, any of these places? So we've had some conversations with the pro leagues. We actually had the Langley Rams use it last year. They won the Canadian National Championship. That's a proof of concept right there. <laughs> and then we just had our baseball version of this because you can use it in baseball or football season. The Sinaloa um, All-Star team down in Mexico won the national championship using our Milla. That's unbelievable. Um, and I imagine that even in there's applications in other sports as well or with I'm envisioning like with uh, people with diverse abilities and things like that can use this kind of as a leveling device as well. Yeah, we had a young man reach out to us from Texas. He's his name's Jarvis Garner. Jarvis is deaf since birth, um, a sophomore, one of the best prospects in Texas. He said this he's no longer considered handicapped while he's on the football field using Armilla. And his dad wrote us and said, um, that this is an answer to all their prayers. Because now he can get the plays on here and doesn't have to worry about the huddle or anything like that. Because I imagine he would have to use sign language or something. So he uses sign language um, only if the other team allows his sign language interpreter out. If not, then he has to line up on the same sideline as his team to get the sign. But with Armella, he can line up anywhere and show his, you know, this is going to uh, level that playing field for the deaf and hearing impaired in the future for football, baseball, and other sports. Absolutely unbelievable. What does the future look like? Where are you hoping to get this? Uh, well, because this whole system doesn't use cellular Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, it can literally work on Gilligan's Island if we stuck you there and had a football game. This thing would... So it's all self-contained? It's, it's, it's all self-contained. Self um, literally, like I said, it, it, there's so many applications out there in the world. Uh, football, baseball are, are starting points because I'm a football coach and I coach baseball too. But uh, soon enough, you're going to see it in all the pro levels uh, very, very quickly here, probably within the next year or so. Unbelievable. I'm so thrilled to have gotten the chance to meet you. Thank you so much. Uh, we're here with Lance Heron of Armillatech at the BC CFA Prospects game. Thank you so much for chatting with me. I really appreciate it. Back to sports. Thank you again, Lance, for joining me. I really appreciate it. I have a feeling that company is going to be very, very successful. All right, let's jump into the rest of sports.
beginning with the Mount Shiem Rotary Club, which has put forward an astounding $75,000 towards the new beginner pump track at the landing on Corbold Street. Construction has begun on the new novice pump track and will reside immediately next to the existing track that was built a couple years ago. The novice pump track will have two beginner loops and is intended to help introduce newer riders, like me, to features of a pump track on a little bit smaller scale. The Upper Fraser Valley RCMP won gold in a charity hockey tournament last week. The event raised money for Cops for Cancer, the Ride to Conquer Cancer, and the Fight to End SMA. The win is dedicated to former RCMP dispatcher Richard Feigl, who tragically lost his battle to cancer in 2018. The University of the Fraser Valley women's golf team established a new high watermark for the program at the Canadian University Championship rallying on the back nine late Saturday to secure the silver medal at the team event in Bromont, Quebec. Meanwhile, Jacob Armstrong led the men's golf team by tying for second at the same event. So congrats to UFV, that golf team has been killing it all year. Sticking with golf, the BC School Sports AAA Golf Provincials are this week at the gorgeous Harrison, uh, pardon me, gorgeous Sandpiper Resort in Harrison Mills. And the GW Graham Grizzlies senior varsity golf team will be there to represent Chilliwack among some of the absolute best high school golf teams in the province. Sandpiper is a gorgeous golf course, absolutely one of my favorites. Uh, here's my advice. You didn't ask for it, but I'm going to give it to you anyways. Uh, kind of just survive the first seven holes. I find those a really challenging way to start. But if you can get through that, eight is gettable, 10 is gettable, 11 is gettable, 13 par five, that's gettable, 14. You can go on a bit of a run on the back nine. Lull them into a sense of security, kill them on the back nine. You guys got this. <laughs> The Northwest Mud Racing Association is back in the dirt this summer. See, mud in the... Anyways. Uh, they have two street classes and six competition classes, from street to stock, to a class known as, and I quote, unlimited blown alcohol paddle class, and everything in between. Now, I don't have a clue what that means. I'm assuming it basically is a variety of sizes of trucks and types of trucks ripping around in the mud. It sounds like a good time. The show is going to come to Heritage Park here in Chilliwack from August 12th to 14th. So definitely check it out if you like trucks and mud. Who doesn't? Now, I got a question for you. How was your Friday night? Would you rather not talk about it? That's okay, because we're going to talk about the Chilliwack Giants Friday night instead. They had an unbelievable time. The U8s up to junior Bantam players played on the field at the BC Place before and at halftime of the Lions Riders game a preseason game, which the Leos won 20 to 18. And an enormous congratulations are in order for the Chilliwack Giants U14 team. They are the first ever undefeated champions of the NFL Flag Canada 2022 Regional Tournament. As a reward, this is so cool, they are heading to Las Vegas next February to represent Chilliwack at a flag football event at the 2023 2023. NFL Pro Bowl. That is going to be an unbelievable memory for those guys. I'm sure a lot of parents are going to want to tag along on that as well. All right, that is all we've got for sports today. As always, if you have a sports story you want me to talk about, I'm happy to promote it. I'm happy to shout it out, make it sound cool. Send it to news at chilltv.ca. All the information, I want to talk about it. Uh, that's all we've got for sports. We're going to go back to Dawn with the weekend weather. We'll see everyone next week. Chill TV weather, it's a mix of sun and showers and the high of 21, and we will keep an eye on the freshet. If you'd like to participate in reporting news in Chilliwack and you have a story you think we should know about, you can always send us a note to news at chilltv.ca. We'd love to hear from you. That's the news this week. I'm Don Lane.